second lesson, St. John chapter 3, verse 34. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. Brethren, have you heard what is read unto you? The word of God cannot be preached with your experience and carnal knowledge. It does not require any form of form, any form of formal education, nor does it require your experience. Paul was a learned lawyer and he said, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. He continues to say, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, foolishness, but unto those who are saved, it is the power of God. Learn of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is meek and lowly in heart. We, therefore, have to preach our Lord Jesus Christ because he is the model, the originator and founder of our faith. God used him to reveal his life and teachings, his statements, all the words which proceeded out of the mouth, out of the mouth, his sufferings, afflictions, and tribulations, and supreme sacrifice. These alone are what we ought to practice, preach, demonstrate, and pass on to others. Mention any church, any church denomination which preaches the Lord Jesus Christ. Mention any church denomination which practices his lesson and testifies about his glory, teaching and demonstrating exactly his lessons and doctrines. Have you not heard the text which says, He whom God has sent speaks the word of God, and God does not give him the spirit by measure? Realize that our Lord Jesus Christ was sent by God, and all he did were the instructions of God. Issued from the mouth of God, he did not speak of himself. All his actions were those of God, and he was enjoined that we learn of him, for he is meek and lowly in heart. Love your enemies. Preachers everywhere have persistently advised their congregation to practice what they preach and not what they do. But he says, practice what I do and teach exactly what I teach without adding or subtracting. He has taught us to love our enemies, to bless them who curse us and do good to those who hate us and to pray for those who despitefully use and persecute us, that we may resemble our Father who is in heaven. This is the directive of God, for he causes this, his Son to shine upon the just and the unjust, and the rain to fall upon the good and the evil. God has taught us again that we should not resist an evil doer and if any person smites us on one cheek we should turn to him the other also that is the lesson imparted to us by god and it is incumbent that we should put it into practice not we alone but also the entire world God has taught us again that if any person wants to compel us to go a mile, we should walk two miles with him. He has further taught us that if somebody should take a court action against us to take our inner garment, we should surrender to him also the outer garments. He has further taught us that we should give to him who asks us and to him who should borrow from us, we should not turn them away. Have you ever found any prophet or any angel or 
that throughout the world since the creation of man that there has been any human being who has imparted such teaching? As long as you read Moses, the veil is over your face. That is why you are persistently told that He is the Word of God. These words are what God teaches and imparts to the inhabitants of the world as His children, urging us to practice them in order to have life. If we have not got the life, it means that we do not believe in Him. It was God Himself who came to teach us all things as contained in the writings from the fifth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew about his life, his character, his ways of life, through the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is therefore our responsibility to comply ourselves with these teachings without adding or subtracting. The teachings of Moses are, are but elementary but God has taught us that any person who is exasperated with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. But whosoever shall to his brother say, Raka, shall be in danger of the Sanhedrin. These statements are made by God and not our Lord Jesus Christ. Reconcile and agree with your adversaries. Our Lord Jesus Christ only spoke out what he imparted to all the inhabitants of the world. Those teachings were not his, but they emanate from the Almighty God. It is God teaching me and you and all others. There are no other teachings but those of our Lord Jesus Christ. Neither can you add nor subtract from any aspect of the teachings, but you have to practicalize all of them, your own qualification notwithstanding, and then teach to others who have not got the opportunity to hear from the horse's mouth. God has further taught that if you are going to offer your gift at the altar and on the way you suddenly remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift and go back home and be reconciled with him before you go to offer your gift at the altar. And God has urged that you quickly agree with your adversary while you are yet with him on the way, lest at any time your adversary delivers you to the judge, and the judge delivers you to the officer, who will cast you into prison. A hireling is not a good shepherd. Moses says whoever commits adultery has committed a grievous sin. But our Lord Jesus, who is invariably God, says, Whosoever looks on a woman with an intention to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Moses has said again that whosoever wants to put away his wife should give her a writing of divorcement. But God should give her, but God says that should not be so. Once joined together, there should be no separation or divorcement except for the cause of fornication, causing her to commit adultery. That is the only ground of divorcement, whether she is a thief or a liar or an insolent woman. Whatever offenses she has committed, you must continue together till the end of your life. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. This is the voice of God, and God says, 
again whosoever divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery and whosoever marries the divorced wife commits adultery also this is spoken by God himself and not by an angel or man God has further said that all hirelings are not good shepherds whosoever professes to serving God but expect a reward, gratification, salary or wage at the end of the month or week or fortnightly such a person is not serving God but the money he earns a laborer is worthy of his hire God has commanded saying freely you receive freely you give go and preach the word of God and carry neither purse nor gold nor scrip nor rod nor two coats nor shoes because a laborer is worthy of his hire that is the voice of God. He says, when you go, heal the sick, raise the dead, make the lame to walk, cleanse the leper, make the dumb to speak, the blind to receive his sight, the deaf to hear. Explain to me why those who profess to be preachers not able to do all these duties commissioned by God himself but they rather argue that such miracles are not things of God. What are they then? If they are not sent by God, who has sent them? The scripture says that he who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he who believes not shall be condemned. That is what God says, and these signs will follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This is unlimited power. The word of God has made it abundantly clear. That our Lord Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is monotheistic. He is one and indivisible, and there is no variableness in Him. Realize that the Word of God is singular in make. Refrain from sin. Do not steal. Do not indulge yourself in the preparation of concoction. Do not hate any person. Love one another. Here lies the central theme of the word of God. Show me any church denomination or bishop or pope who can practice a single word of God. It is said, whosoever professes to be a leader but transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ as neither the Father nor the Son. But all leaders are any persons who abide in the doctrine of Christ, the same as both the Father and the Son. There is no other teacher. God is the only teacher. That is why I tell you that in brotherhood I am not the originator. I am only a brotherhood. God is brotherhood. He started, he planted, and harvested. He does everything. It is the word of God which protects us. We emanate from the word of God. We live in it. Our infirmities are healed with the word of God. And with it we are redeemed unto heaven. We therefore have nothing else. And God himself has said, any person who rejects the Christ and refuses his words, no person will judge him. But even the words he refused will stand as judgment against him on the last day. Our golden text will again be read. All of you should open your ears. All your sickness problems are solved.
golden text, St. John chapter 7, verse 17. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Notice how our Lord Jesus Christ has arranged his statements. If any man does his will, whose will? God's will. He will know whether the word comes from God or whether I speak of myself. Since the creation of the world, he was the first man who did the will of God. He came to the earth and did everything. He attributed everything to God the Father that does everything. But in your own case, you will attribute everything to yourself. When you claim ownership of a building, when you do something, you say, you, you claim, you do it. You boast that you founded the church denomination. You claim to be the founder. Where have you placed God? Right now, the markets are opened. Sell your articles. You have founded churches everywhere and littered them in all towns and villages. But go and practice the word of God. Opening a church is one thing, but putting the word of God into practice is quite another thing. Except God directs what you do is not approved. There is no church denomination which practices his word, nor is there any of them which preaches his word. How will power be felt? How will the power of healing be present? How will God be in such a church? It is said, except the Lord builds the house, they that labor in they they labor in vain who built it. And except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman, the watchman wakes, but in vain. Wherever the word of God is not present, if you do not speak and if you do not practice the word of the Christ, you do not benefit in any way. If you fast for a prolonged period, you will not find out the source of this power. If you pray, it will not be revealed to you. If you ask any person to show you, he will not be able to direct you to the source. But you will know it if you commence practicing the word of God. If you want to determine whether these words come from man or they derive from God, go and practicalize the words. Do not sin. Do not steal, do not fornicate, do not prostitute about, do not indulge in the preparation of concoction, do not tell lies, and refrain from all acts of sin, and love one another, and you will determine from where they came. Go to the world, preach, do what you preach. When you preach to people to repent that the kingdom of God is at hand, it is not a new style of preaching. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto me any graven image. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Are not new gospels also. They are very old, but people have refused to practice them. Go now and practice them, and you will know whether they are the word of God or not. When a preacher declares on the pulpit, telling people when God helps, they should help themselves, can that preacher show me a passage in the Bible which leads, which lends credence to such a statement? Can he have support in the Bible? When you say that God does not prevent any person from drinking, 
Can you support your statement from any passage in the Bible? And God told Aaron, This is the everlasting covenant which you have. If a person separate himself unto God, he should also separate himself from wine and strong drink, and should drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink, neither should he drink any liquor or grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried grapes. He said again, when any person separates himself, to vow a vow of another right to separate themselves unto the Lord, he should touch no dead body, should not cry and wail and mourn. They should not keep any mourning out. Whether your mother or father or brother or son or wife dies because you have separated yourself unto God, you are holy and have nothing to do with anything filthy. Let the dead bury the dead. Has our Lord Jesus Christ not supported this statement when the young man told him, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bury my father. He told him, let the dead bury the dead but you go and proclaim the glory of God. Who has said this? Is it not the voice of God which says, let the dead bury their dead? In another passage, he provides another support when he says, I am not God of the dead, but of the living. You who are Thomases, refer to Luke chapter 20, verses 36 to 38, and you will see the confirmation. God is not God of the dead, but of the living. But no, your work is to keep mourning houses, to weep, cry, wail, mourn, and lament. God has already told you. He who loves his brother passes from death into life. Has he not removed us from death when he says, Love ye one another even as I have loved you? And whosoever loves his brother passes from death into life, but whosoever does not love his brother abides in death. He says, Whom whosoever commits sin is the slave of sin. A slave does not live in the house forever but the son lives in his father's house home forever he says again that the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is everlasting life in christ jesus why do you persist in committing sin telling lies steal commit murder fornicate indulging the preparation of concoction why do you continue in these vices he says the last enemy to be destroyed is death. If we do not love one another as he has instructed us, how will death be taken away? Can you realize the lesson given us? He means that if you love every person, you have passed from death into life, from sickness, from poverty, from all encumbrances into life everlasting. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ has passed through the mouth of Paul to say, If you bestow all your goods to feed the poor and give your body to be burnt, but you have no charity, it profits you nothing. You still abide in death. That singular commandment which God gives to you saying love ye one another as I have loved you is what I have brought to you it is what I revisit God is love the Christ is love the Holy Spirit is love therefore it is incumbent upon all the children of God to love
practice the word of God to prove that the word of God is supreme. If you want to know whether these teachings come from man or they come from God, go and practice them. The same lies you told against our Lord Jesus Christ, you are telling them against me that the leader says one thing or the other. Have I ever made any statement of the hell? All what I say are quotations from the Bible. Have I ever arrogated any statement to myself? Do I send you to fetch water for me or go to the market or plant a garden? What I tell you is the gospel of the Lord. When God speaks, you rather say it is Olumba, Olumba, Obu who says it. Have I said anything? When our Lord Jesus Christ said, I, I and the Father are one, the people took up stones to stone him that he has arrogated himself to the position of God. In the same token, when I tell you at this end of time that God says something, you allege that O O Obu has declared himself God. If I tell you that I made the statement, are there carnal words found in the statement? If I claim to be the speaker, then I am a liar. In John chapter 7 verse 18, he says, he who speaks of himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Whenever I tell you that I am in high heaven declaring any words to you that it is God who speaks, you will argue that he has openly declared himself to be God. Have the scales not fallen off your eyes? Have you heard what our Lord Jesus Christ has said? For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come, that I be glorified. You should seek the glory of him who sent you. I have come to reveal our Lord Jesus Christ whom you do not know and always referring to him as the son of Mary and Joseph. I am coming to reveal his glory. This is just the preliminary stage of the revelation. I will so reveal him to your own shame. And John said, he who follows me existed before me. I baptize with water but he baptizes with fire and the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whoever believes in me will do the same work that I do, and indeed greater works than this will he do, because I go back to the Father. You are aware that it is the Father who works, Jehovah God and his Christ also works and the Holy Spirit works. I am not the doer because I am nothing. I do not seek my own glory. Have I ever preached to you that I am a prophet or elder or pastor? I am not. I only bring to you the gospel of God to teach you. Practice and demonstrate, reform you and tell you to retrace your steps. You have wandered widely in the world. You should now return to the house. Your father is preparing for you. Are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ not manifested today when he said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Are these words not fulfilled today? I have come to reveal his glory. This is his glory. He it is who baptizes with fire and the Holy Spirit. 
He is here now, Jehovah God and His Christ, the Holy Spirit. All the prophets of God are here and the children of God are here also. The apostles and the rest of the people from Adam are present here. Brethren, I have no intention of being tedious unto you. One stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Those who have ears, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.